welcome everyone to Holy Spirit Parish North Ride in the Archdiocese of Sydney for the celebration of the Eucharist on the second Sunday of Easter, within the octave of Easter. And today we also celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. Our presiding priest is the Provincial Superior of the Congregation of St. Michael the Archangel and our parish priest, Father Stan Kluck. We now begin Holy Mass with our opening hymn. Jesus is risen, let us sing. Praise to the ever-living King. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise Him in sunny seraphim. Praise Him with joy each In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Dear friends, today we hear of Jesus' resurrected appearance to his disciples. Jesus shares his authority to forgive sins. We call this the institution of the sacrament of penance. So on this Divine Mercy Sunday, let us call on the mercy and love of God. Lord Jesus, you appear to your disciples behind closed doors. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you gave them the power to forgive sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call Thomas and all of us to believe in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, Glory to, God to God in the, in the highest, highest and, and on, on earth peace to people, people of, of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, you we bless you, you we adore, adore you. you. We glorify you. you. We, we give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten Son, Son. Lord God, God, Lamb of God, God Son of the Father, Father. you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For, For you, you alone, alone are the Holy One, one. You, you alone, alone are the Lord, you, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what form they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
the first Christians were so filled with love and gratitude towards God that they were willing to share everything they had. From the Acts of the Apostles, the whole group of believers was united, heart and soul. No one claimed for his own use anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles. It was then distributed to any members who might be in need. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Let the sons of Israel say, His love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, His love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. I was punished. I was punished by the Lord, but not doomed to die. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. To believe in Jesus Christ and to live in love is the greatest victory in this world. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love God's children if we love God himself and do what he has commanded us. This is what loving God is, keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not difficult because anyone who has been begotten by God has already overcome the world. This is the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness, since the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me. Happy are those who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, 
he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed. But Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the, and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A parish priest looks over his large congregation on Easter morning and startles them with this announcement, with this statement. Dear friends, realizing that I will not see many of you until next Easter, may I take this opportunity to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. That was cheeky. But dear friends, if we are really honest, we must admit that the difference in the size of the congregation on Easter Sunday and on the other Sundays of the year is very, very noticeable. Many of our Christians, as far as church attendance is concerned, have indeed become just holy weak Christians because you see them in church only during the Holy Week. Like a certain man who was criticizing his parish priest, I have attended this church for three years, he says. And each time the homily is always on the same topic. Doesn't he have something else to talk about? Yes, this man has been attending the church for three years, all right. But he only attends on Easter Sunday. And he always Here's a homily <coughs> on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, dear friends, we may ask, why? Why are many well-meaning Christians, Catholics, so uncommitted to attending regular Sunday church services? And the answer can be given in one word. Doubt or crisis of faith, or simply lack of faith. People today, like people of all times, do have a hunger for God in their hearts. They are in search for the meaning of life, but they doubt whether the answer to these important questions can be found 
within the four walls of the church. So for this reason, they are more disposed to spend time in social action, in work, in front of TV or computer, or watching sports rather than in church worship, in church praying. And today's gospel gives us an example of a man who felt exactly the same way. Of course, we are talking about Thomas. In the evening of the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, the disciples had met. Jesus came and stood among them, the scripture says. So the disciples gathered on Sunday, the first day of the week, to celebrate, to pray. And since they are gathered together in his name, Jesus would appear to them as he had earlier promised them. And again, in Matthew, he says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. In this way, Sunday became known as the day of the Lord, the day Jesus comes to meet and strengthen his people, the special day of Christian worship, special, holy, sacred day, not for shopping, not for working, but praising God, spending together as a family. So in fact, today's gospel is describing the first Christian Sunday worship following the resurrection of the Lord. And all the disciples are gathered for Sunday service. And what do we notice? Thomas is not there. Thomas is not with them. So where is Thomas? You can see that Thomas is like one of these modern day Christians who do not go to church every Sunday because once a month is enough. Or as they put in application form for the children for the schools, for the high school, or occasionally. Occasionally? What does it mean? What kind of, kind of faith it is? And such people are not there in church when Jesus comes to meet his people and to strengthen them in their faith, in their journey of life. So as a result, they remain with the doubts because their faith is not growing. Their faith is not nurtured. They starve spiritually. Initially, all the disciples had the doubts, like all of us. But because of their encounter with the risen Lord in Sunday worship, Sunday gathering, the doubt was turned into faith. Of course, Thomas missed that encounter, that experience. But being a wise man, Thomas resolved never again to miss the Sunday gathering of believers. And the gospel reading continues. A week later, meaning the following Sunday, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them this time. And Jesus came and stood among them. Yes, this time, Thomas had his own share of the resurrection experience. Immediately, his doubt changed into faith, and he fell down and worshipped, saying, My Lord and my God. So now we may ask ourselves and reflect a little bit on this situation. What if Thomas had stayed away from others, other disciples, saying, just prove it. Prove it to me that Jesus is risen, and then I will come. Would it be possible to prove it to him by arguments alone? 
I don't think so. Sometimes the best argument you can give to someone out there who is in doubt and does not believe is a sentence in three words. Like maybe that's your daughter, your son, your husband. And you know that it's so difficult to convince him or her. But there's a Mother's Day. There's your birthday. You say to him or her, that will be the best gift you can give me. Come with me. Yeah, come and see. Come in. And let the risen Lord, who is here with us in Sunday celebration, the Lord who is here in his word and in the Eucharist, let him himself speak to you and touch your heart. And then you will doubt no longer but believe. So dear friends, dear friends, the answer to our religious questions and doubts is not out there somewhere. The answer is right here in front of Blessed Sacrament, in front and on the altar. So, when you are in doubt, think of doubting Thomas and learn from his own experience. Finally come and you will see for yourself. And then, fall on your knees praying, my Lord and my God. Friends, now, together, let's profess our faith. I, I believe, believe in one God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God. begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered the death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Compassionate Father, on this Sunday, when we celebrate the mercy of God, be merciful to us as we pray for our needs and the needs of the world. For the Pope and the bishops of the Church, that they may shepherd the Church with love and the witness of service to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may build peace upon the foundations of justice and care for those who are weakest and most vulnerable in society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, that in the struggles and <clears throat> joys of family life, they may know the presence of the God who loves them and walks with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of forgiveness bestowed on us by the reconciling power of Christ Jesus and made active through the healing presence of the Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this community who are in need, for those who touch and support us in our faith journey, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died 
and those mentioned in our parish bulletin. And for those who grieve, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we are grateful that you know and love us not only in our strengths, but also in our weakest moments. Uphold us when we are doubtful and encourage us when we are afraid. Help us to remember your unending mercy. And we ask this to Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in, in this time, above all, to lodge you at more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he, by dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of, of your glory. Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Anthony our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, Saint Michael the Archangel, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As one God's family, united by Jesus Christ, by his love, let's pray together as he taught us. Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let's offer each other the sign of love, the sign of peace. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Bring your hand and fill the place of the nails. And do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia. Dear friends, we all have our questions. We all have our doubts. And that's, that's normal. But we cannot just 
end and stop with our doubts, our questions. And especially on this Divine Mercy Sunday, whatever we are going through, whatever is happening in our lives, Jesus is telling us, trust in me, trust in my love. So now we're going to receive him sacramentally, but also in a spiritual way, everyone at home. Yes, trust your family, trust yourself, your life, your problems to Jesus Christ, receiving him in Holy Communion. That's the same Jesus, but in different form, who was healing people around him, people who are in need. And we are in need at the moment, in need of peace, of love, of forgiveness. So let's open our hearts, invite him in a spiritual way with his healing power. My, My Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe that, that you are present in the, the most blessed, blessed sacrament. sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this, Pas of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
go forth, the mass is ended. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia. Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And for peace in the world, hail Mary, Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Thank you so much, dear friends, for praying with us, celebrating Holy Eucharist, and always stay safe in Jesus' name. Voices live.